Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at two parts of the algebra topic. We're going to look at simplifying expressions and substitution. In particular, we're going to focus on the misconceptions, the most common misconceptions um, from one of the recent tests. We're first of all going to look at simplifying expressions. We're then going to look at completing calculations in the correct order before moving on to substituting into a formula and then evaluating. So if we look at simplifying expressions, we would introduce this in the classroom by taking um, an expression like this and using the algebra tiles. So for example, 4x would look like that, four bars, which you'll be familiar with from um, the second video on solving equations where we also used algebra tiles. Then we've got three positives. Then we've got three red bars, three um, negative x's, and then we're adding into that negative one. So you could actually write the expression um, slightly differently like this, where we're adding the three red x's and we're adding uh, the negative one, the one red. You don't necessarily need to do that though. So what we would do is we would take the algebra tiles and we would group the tiles that are alike. We would group the tiles that are um, sort of like terms and then simplify. So we've grouped the tiles. We can see the like terms as we would describe them in class. And hopefully what you can see, again, building on the previous topic on negative numbers, we have a zero pair there. We have a zero pair here. We have collected the like terms. We can now see the zero pairs and we have an answer of x and positive two. So x plus two. Similarly, we could introduce the x squared tile. So we've got two of the x squared tiles. We've got three positives, three yellows. We've got a positive x, another positive x squared, three more positive x's, and a positive four. Those like terms together. Pupils could have these out on their desks and physically um, moving these tiles. So we're collecting the like terms together. They're are no zero pairs there at all, so we can just write down the answer. So we've got three of the x squared tiles, we've got four of the positive x's, and then we've got seven positives. Similarly, some of the negative tiles, there are quite a few negative tiles involved in this expression. Again, we're starting off with the two x squared, then we're going to add in three negatives, we're going to add in one negative x. We're going to add in a negative x squared tile. Again, we're going to add in three negative x's, three red x's, and then we've got the plus two there. So we've got two x squared. We're added in three negatives. We're adding in one negative x. We're adding in a negative x squared tile. We're adding in negative three x's and there's our two positives at the end. We could group together terms like so and then look to see what we can simplify before writing down our final answer. We've got zero pair in the x squared section and we've got two zero pairs in the number section. So my final answer is x squared minus 4x and minus one. Moving away from the algebra tiles, we could approach it in a similar way, and this is how we did it in the class. Take an expression like this, this time it involves two variables, or two letters, x and y. What we would do is we would ask the young people to have a look at the terms within that expression. So we've got positive four x's, positive seven y's, we would add in six negative x's and add in two negative y's. And having looked through that expression, we can see that we have some x's and some y's. And we could group them together in columns like so. 
So we've got 4 in the x column, 7 in the y column. Then we're back to the x column where we have 6 negatives, negative 6, and then negative 2 in the y column. And then we will just simplify, we will add each column together. So in the x column, we have a total of negative 2, and in the y column, we have a total of positive 5. So my final answer would be negative 2x and positive 5y. Similarly, in this example here, we're starting off with three negative x's. We have then five positive y's. We're going to add in two negative x's and we're going to add in nine negative x's. Using our columns of x's and y's, we have three negative x's, we have five positive y's, we have two negative x's and then another nine negative x's. In the x column, we have a total of negative 14. You can see that there are no positive and negative combinations there. They are all negative. So we have a total of 14 negatives and a total of five in the y column. So the final answer is negative 14x and positive 5y. You could easily swap these columns around and have the y first and then the x. That would give me exactly the same answer, but just in a reordered, um, written in a reordered way. So if I put the y column first, the answer would simply be 5y minus 14x. So the minus still follows with the 14x. Similarly here, we've got 9x's, positive 5y's. We're going to add in negative 8x's and we're going to add in negative 4y's. We have x's and y's again. We have 9 in the x column, 5 in the y column negative 8 in the x column and negative 4 in the y. Finding the totals and simplifying, we have 1 in the x column and 1 in the y column. So the final answer here would just be written as x plus y. So we don't write the 1 as part of that. The 1, um, whether it's 1 or negative 1, we never write that number 1. It's always just the term, the variable, the letter. So in this case, it's x plus y. So this illustrates one of two common misconceptions from, the, from the, the recent assessment. Taking a question like this one, for example, simplify 2a minus 4b minus 5a plus 6b. We have a's and b's. We have two a's minus 4b's minus 5a's and 6b's, so positive 6. If we simplify and find the total of each column, 2 and negative 5 is negative 3, and negative 4 and 6 add to make positive 2. So my final answer is there in the working but lots of young people in the in the recent test wrote the answer like that, negative 3a and then 2b. Some didn't even write the answer and left it in the columns, which, which isn't okay. The columns there is part of the working, but we need to present the final answer. Now, the issue with the way this is written at the moment is that the plus symbol, the positive symbol, hasn't been included. It's a positive 2, so it needs to be written like that. So even if there's not a symbol as part of the answer, it still needs to be written in the answer. So negative 3a plus 2b. The second misconception was from something like this. So simplify 7t plus 4g minus t minus 5g. Again, we've got t and g as part of this. 7t, 4g, negative 1t and negative 5g. Simplifying and finding the total of each column, we have 7 and negative 1, gives me a total of 6, and 4 and negative 5 gives me a total of negative 1. So some pupils were writing the answer like this. The problem with that 
is that the one should never ever be included. So the answer should be written like this, 6t minus g. So 6t minus g, we don't include the 1. And that rule, if you like, is carried through the maths course all the way to fourth and fifth year uh, work in the senior phase at National 5 and higher. So moving on briefly to completing calculations in the correct order. This is more um, commonly known, I suppose, as board mass or bid mass and applying the being able to do this throughout the curriculum, not only in maths but in other subjects, is um, really quite important, particularly as you move on through the school. So we tend to use this graphic to, to illustrate it. We have as our uppermost priority what we call groups. Now groups are most commonly seen within a bracket. Then we have got powers and roots, divide and multiply, and then last in the order of priority is subtract and then add. If you have a string, for example, where you have a calculation that just involves um, minus and add, then you just work that left to right. So taking this example, 5 plus 2 times 4 minus 3. We would need to do that first. So 2 times 4 is 8. The rest of that carries down. A common, a common error here is pupils putting the 8 first in this new line of working because they, they completed that first. But the position of it needs to remain the same. Now we have a string that just involves um, that bottom row. So we just work this left to right. So 5 add 8 is 13. Still have to take away the 3, and the final answer there is 10. In this example, we have to calculate the power first. So 3 squared is how we would read that out, and that is 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Again, the order of that calculation needs to remain the same. We don't put the 9 at the start. We have to complete the multiplication next before we do the add. Remember, um, adding is the lowest in the list of priorities. 9 times 5 is 45. 1 plus 45, keeping the order the same. And the final answer is 46. And lastly, we have 8 plus 5 minus 3 squared. Again, we have to do the squared part first, the power first. 3 squared is 9. And that remains last keeping the order the same. 8 add 5 minus 9. Both operations there, the add and the minus, are part of that bottom um, section in the graphic. So we just complete it left to right. So 8 add 5 minus 9 is 4. So taking those skills forward into algebra, we look at substituting into a formula and then carrying out those calculations. We're going to look at two common mis uh, test misconceptions here. So starting with um, this example, evaluate 4 plus 2x when x is 3. So I'm going to replace the letter x with um, the, the number 3. When we have a number and a letter um, attached like that as highlighted in the blue, that means we're going to multiply these two together. So we're going to do 2 times 3. And again, consistent with previous learning, we keep the order the same. We complete the multiplication first, of course. So 2 times 3 is 6. And we will do 4 plus 6, which is 10. So a very similar example here. Again, we're going to keep x equals 3. We have a number and a letter, 2x attached. That means we're going to multiply these two things together. So x is 3, so we'll do 2 times 3. So we have negative 4 minus 2 times 3. We complete the 2 times 3 first according to the order of operations or bid mass. 2 times 3 is 6, and we will have to do negative 4 minus 6, which simplifies to negative 10.
In this example here, we are introducing a second variable or a second letter. We have 5x minus 2y. And what we can do here is we can look at the 5x, which we know is 5 times x. So 5 times 3 minus 2y. We have next 2 times y, which is 2 times 2. We can complete each block of multiplications there um, sort of simultaneously. The important part is that we complete those before we do the subtraction. So 5 threes are 15, minus 2 times 2, which is 4, and 15 minus 4 is 11. Here we're introducing a squared. So evaluating b squared minus 4ac, introducing a third letter. So b squared minus 4ac would be 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. 4ac, we have a group there, um, which, which means that we are multiplying. Let's complete the squared first as per the, um, the graphic. 6 times 6 is 36. We need to complete the block of multiplications next. So that's 36 minus 24. And 36 minus 24 is 12. In this example here, we're looking at 5x squared when x equals 3. So this is the equivalent of 5 times 3 squared. 5x means 5 times x, and the squared is attached to the x. So we do the power first. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 9 is 45. Now this is where we start unpicking the, the test, or one of the test misconceptions. Come up and look at a very similar um, question. This time 4x squared when x equals 5. Again, we have 4 times x squared, so it's 4 lots of x squared, 4 times 5 squared. 5 squared first, which is 25, and 4 times 25 is 100. Now compare this to a question that looks very similar, but is very, very different. Evaluate 4x in a bracket squared. Well, the bracket's important, it's a group, and that now changes the order of priority. We have to complete the 4 times 5, this time first, before squaring, because groups come first. So 4 times 5 would be 20. 20 squared would be 400. So the introduction of the bracket in the right-hand side example changes the, the calculation completely. And this is where the first um, cropped up. In this question here, evaluate 2x squared when x equals 3. So a number of young people treated it as if brackets were there and did 2 times 3 to get 6 and then squared the 6. But of course, you need to square the 3 first. So 3 squared first, which is 9. 2 times 9, which is 18. So be aware of that when revising and, and recapping things like this at home. The, the brackets in this type make a big, big difference. Moving on to the second misconception. Um, where we, we, we have an evaluate question, a substitution question involving a bracket. This time a equals 6. Considering the graphic, we have to do the bracket first. So a is 6. 6 add 2 is 8. This is another way that we can write a multiplication. There's nothing in between the 3 and the 8, which implies multiplication in the same way as if it was written as a 3x. So this is another way of writing a multiplication, 3 times 8, which is 24. So that moves us swiftly on to the test misconception involving brackets. In this case, y was 5. So substituting into the bracket, we have 2y, which is 2 times 5. We have to complete the bracket first. And within that, we have a we have a another order of operations to consider. We have a times, and then we have a subtract. 
the times has to be completed first. So we'll do the 2 times 5, which is 10, and then subtract the 3 to make 7. And we have 4 times 7. Again, there's nothing in between these, so that's another way that we could write 4 times 7, which is 28.